Hi guys, they were reviewing a gaming PC from CyberPower. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So I reached out to CyberPower and asked if they could build me their best gaming PC to review for a budget of a thousand pounds, which is equivalent to about $1,300 in the US. Now coming over to their website, this is the one they recommended. It's the Infinity X105 GT gaming PC. And with a few amendments, this is what we've got. The CPU is an Intel Core i5-10400F with six cores running at 2.9 gigahertz. We've got 16 gig of DDR4 RAM supporting speeds up to 3200 megahertz. The graphics card is a GeForce RTX 3060 with 12 gig of memory on there. And storage wise, we've got M.2 SSD drive, which is one terabyte in size, but the spec can be adjusted according to your budget and requirements. So I'll be setting it up, doing some benchmark tests and trying out some gaming on there. So let's begin with opening up and seeing what you get in the packaging. In the packaging, you get a piece of paper thanking you for your order and highlighting if you need to return the PC for any reason, just hold on to the packaging. There's also an email address for support. And then there's a PC. There's nothing else in there, no boxes containing any cables or anything. So the first thing we need to do is get this tempered glass side off because there's some bits and pieces within this. So if we lay the PC on the side, and at the side, you'll notice a slight tab. So if I lift that up, you can see the corner here come away and then turning the case round, we just lift up this corner and then slowly prise the rest of this off and it pops open. Now carefully removing the side panel, you can see the packing in here. So there's a bag containing some bits and some packing. So if we carefully lift that out and that's all that needs to be removed from the case. Let's have a look at what you get in the bag here. You get a remote control to allow you to control the LEDs on the case. And there's a small plastic tab at the bottom. If I pull that out, that engages the battery underneath there. Then we get a two meter power cable and that's what the cable looks like. Coming over to the back, you can see the ports on the motherboard. So you've got HDMI, a VGA, which has some tape over it. So I'm assuming you shouldn't be using that. Keyboard and mouse point, two USB points, which are USB 2 and four USB 3 ports together with ethernet and audio ports over here. On the graphics card, there's a HDMI port and three display ports. And at the bottom, we've got the power input and on off button. With the cover off, let's take a quick look inside. So we've got the location where the CPU is, it's just behind here, and this is a stock cooler. So it's the most basic one you could get. Next to that, we've got two RAM sticks, and these are both eight gig in size. There's no additional slots next to it. So if you wanted to expand this, you'd probably wanna get rid of these and buy larger ones. Then we've got the M.2 SSD below here. So it's just a matter of removing those two screws if you wanted to expand that. And then we've got the MSI GeForce RTX 3060 graphics card. Card. You can see for yourself, it's a real beast, just enormous in size. And looking below there, you can see there's no additional ports left on the motherboard. So what that means, you can see the slots here on the case. You wouldn't be able to expand this out any further with additional cards if you wanted to. You've got four fans in there for cooling. So one's over here and you've got three on this side. Taking a look at the cable management, you can see for yourself nice and tidy. You can see the cables connecting onto the motherboard and then onto the graphics card and to the fan as well. Everything's hidden behind a plate there coming down. Then you've got the power supply below here and the cables are hidden in there as well. So nice and tidy all the way around. Flipping the case around, just a plain black finish here. Over at the top here, you've got a grill and that's for ventilation of the case and if I put my nail in and lift this up that's removable so you can clean this up as well. There's notches over here and if I flip this around that's how it sits into position. Two USB 3 ports, two 3.5 mil ports, one for microphone, the other one for headphones, a hard disk activity light, restart button and power button. The front panel here is made out of tempered glass as well and that can be removed just by pulling it here at the side and then just lifting it away. There's mesh over these three areas. And if I put the cover back on, just locks into position. Placing the tempered glass side panel back in is simple. It just slots into place here and then you just push it back into position and it just locks in. Let's remove the protective film on the side here.
and we'll remove the plastic film on the front too. Let's get all the cables connected now. So the power cable goes in the back here, push it in as far as it would go, and then turn the power button on. You can connect it to your monitor or TV via a HDMI or DisplayPort cable. So I'm gonna use a HDMI cable here. There's no Wi-Fi card in the computer, so you can't connect via Wi-Fi. So you're gonna have to use a wired connection if you wanted internet access. And I've got an ethernet cable here. The other end's plugged into my router and I can just plug this side in just over here. I'm gonna use a wireless mouse and wireless keyboard and the dongle for these are here. Just plug them directly into the USB 2 slots. Everything's connected up now and I've placed the PC at my console gaming area and it's going to be connected to a TV which is an LG C1 OLED and this supports 4K at 120Hz. Let's power on the PC and let me quickly run through the setup on here. With the PC powered on, you can see the four fans have RGB on there, together with some RGB along the graphics card there. Looks absolutely stunning. Now, if we take a look at the remote control we get with this, there's the ability to control this RGB. So if I press the off button, you can turn it off, turn it on again, you can cycle through the different colors. So you've got some static colors here. And if we click on auto, it starts going into RGB mode with multiple colors on there. Now there's even the ability to control the fan speed on here. So if I click here, speed starts going down. I'll take it right down. Goes completely quiet and you can see the fans come to a standstill. Let's ramp it up again to maximum. There's a subtle hum coming from there. Let's measure noise levels from the PC. So I've got my sound level meter here. We go quiet for a moment. So it's about 47 decibels are getting from there with the fans running at full speed. Obviously you don't want to turn the fans off only because they assist with cooling down the PC. Now I've taken the cover off the front of the PC just so you can see the LEDs clearer on this and then coming around the side obviously the LED on the graphics card together with the other fan there but now turning it around on here you can see as well as the fan you've got an LED strip in there as well I didn't notice that before obviously that's lighting up in conjunction with the other items as well so it looks pretty cool let's do a speed test on boot up time logging in and then going to a website and see how long it takes so let's start now about 20 seconds. So that's even including a delay, me messing around trying to type something in. So it's even quicker than that. So I've performed a benchmark test on here and just to show the results. So on a CPU multi-core test, you can see the results here with the AMD Ryzen Threadripper being the highest one there in terms of performance. It comes in at number seven and coming down here, you can see some of the CPUs it's beaten. So it's an i7, 11th gen i7 as well. And now flipping over to single core test, it's coming at number five here. You can see the ones ahead of it. And interesting seeing this, the AMD Ryzen Threadripper has been beaten by this. So impressed, I was dubious about it being an i5 and how well it would perform, but this proves it does perform well. Taking a look at display properties on the PC, you can see display resolution by default went to 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. Looking at the other resolutions available, you can see it can go higher than that. Now, if I scroll down, go to advanced display and refresh rates, so I can up it to 120 Hertz, so that is supported with this. And with the three additional slots on there, you could have potentially up to four monitors connected to this. Coming over to the back of the computer, the HDMI port and VGA port on the motherboard. If you're wondering if they work, I've tested it out and they don't work. Now, if we look further down, the four ports on the graphics card, three display port connectors and a HDMI connector. I've connected a monitor into every port just to show it in action. And there we have it works really well so i've got my two main monitors over here these are two 27 inch ones and then two portable ones just below that works perfectly 
For general usage, the PC is perfect from browsing websites to streaming on-demand videos from services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, etc. The Microsoft Office Suite works well and even video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro works flawlessly. No ridiculous delays or pauses, so no complaints there. Moving on to gaming, I thought I'd test out gaming the PC in three different display modes. So 4K, 1440p and 1080p with an unlimited frame rate to see what it could handle. I selected a small selection of popular games just to give you a rough idea of what to expect. I chose Fortnite, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto 5, Forza Horizon 4 and Dirt 5. Let's begin with Fortnite. I kept all the graphic settings to epic and with the resolution at 4K, I was getting a frame rate of around 40 frames per second. General picture quality was really good, but not ideal for gaming as you'd want it running at a smoother rate for a better gaming experience. Minimum I'd recommend would be at least 60 frames per second and it was well below that. Testing out at 1440p and on this it was much better as I was getting around 70 frames per second and it was a much smoother experience as you can see. Picture quality is good and overall performance is much better and more acceptable for gaming. Now finally on to 1080p and this works really well. A super smooth gaming experience with it easily maintaining 120 frames per second. Moving on to Call of Duty in 4k with unlimited frame rate. Here we're getting around 50 frames per second which isn't too bad as you can see. Now let's flip over to 1440p and here I'm seeing around 80 frames per second which is still good and finally on to 1080p where you get about 120 frames per second so really good in that resolution. With Grand Theft Auto 5 I tested at 1080p it was generally fine but I did notice the occasional judder on there. Now testing out some sim racing with Forza Horizon 4 and Dirt 5 with the latest Fanatec CSL DD racing wheel. With Forza Horizon 4 I did a bench benchmark test and in 4k it managed to achieve 79 frames per second on average which I thought was really good and more than adequate for a good racing experience. Playing Dirt 5 was great too and this was running at 1080p. No judder, very smooth gaming experience, it didn't struggle in any way and a good immersive feel to it. Overall the gaming performance on this PC is definitely good. It can easily cope with 1080p and 1440p to an acceptable frame rate but depending on the game it may struggle at 4k but but surprisingly it did well on Forza Horizon 4. So in summary if you're after a mid-range pre-built PC this is definitely a good option to consider with its Intel Core i5 10400F 6 core 2.9 gigahertz processor 16 gig of DDR4 dual memory RAM the latest MSI GeForce RTX 3060 graphics card with 12 gig of memory and M.2 SSD drive which has a capacity of one terabyte. It's perfect for general usage from browsing the web to watching movies, using Microsoft Office, or even video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Gaming wise, it can easily manage 1080p and 1440p at an acceptable frame rate for a good gaming experience, and in some instances, cope well with 4K. So if you're after a general all-round PC, this one would suit most people's needs for the thousand pound mark. Negatives wise, the motherboard doesn't support any additional slots for more memory or additional cards, and there's no Wi-Fi connectivity. But obviously, Obviously you can add and upgrade items in the customization section when purchasing but this comes at an additional cost. So there you have it you made it to an end of another video and I hope it's helped anybody thinking of purchasing this PC from CyberPower. Details are in the description below including purchasing links. If you're new to the channel I hope you can subscribe and hit that bell icon to be informed of my next release and don't forget to smash that like button as it really helps me out. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.